Hey guys, so we are looking at Lola's Instagram recreating this shot right here. So I'll show a little before and after for you guys. Take a look through a feed and I'll explain a bit of what's going on. So straight away, I see that there's a very low amount of contrast and then there's obviously pretty pastel tones. So there's a lot of blues and then there's a lot of oranges creating this really dreamy, soft, style she has with pastel tones and she's always shooting pretty wide say 24 millimeters or so tiny bit of grain but otherwise it's just really nice and sharp and smooth you can come over here to check out her presets so over here you can check out all her preset packs i'll link these up so you want to get a variety of presets because one preset won't work one lighting scenario so before and afters if you like and yeah back to her instagram okay so really low contrast gonna bring down those highlights for tons of detail there's no like there's no glare in the image an extremely smooth image and yeah there's not too much mac there's a strong fade to those blacks the blacks are keep quite dark actually but there's a nice fade to the shadows and lola has actually also joined my course where she takes you guys through three edits herself uh, you guys get the raw image and you follow along exactly how she does it and she just explains her thought process how she gets her colors and you guys get the raw images for those so you can follow along exactly how she does it so she's just one of many talented guest editors we have if you want to learn from her herself she's got tons of tips for you guys you chose three images in different lighting scenarios so you can definitely get the same results so check out the course page anyone inside the course also has access to this raw image so you can follow along step by step i was super honored when martin asked me to be a part of this course because there are so many amazing creators involved and one thing i really loved about the course is that you can see directly from your favorite creators all the special techniques that they use to edit their photos and one really cool thing is that you can actually download their photos and edit along with them which i thought was really cool and really fun so you can make sure you're getting every detail correct so not only will this course teach you how to make your photos look really nice but you'll also know the full ins and out of Lightroom. It's also great that you don't have to bounce between different websites or YouTube videos because everything can easily be found inside the course view. Having all the resources in one place is really helpful if you're starting out or even if you've been doing photography for a little while. As someone who's been doing photography for over four years, this course has made me realize that there is still so much you can learn. I definitely recommend this course to any skill level or to anyone who's looking to take their photography seriously because you're gonna come away with an insane amount of knowledge. These kinds of courses weren't available when I started out doing photography a couple years ago so I think it's a really great advantage to have all the information in one place. It's definitely the most complete course I've come across and I think it's really great to invest in your knowledge first before you start going out and investing in all that expensive camera gear. So if you're looking to invest in a really great photography course I definitely recommend Martin's. You're going to learn so much and then become a photo editing pro so thank you again Martin for letting me be a part of the course and good luck on your photo editing journey. Uh yeah let's get into this tutorial. Let's get into this one so we will bump up the exposure to see what we're doing so bump it up a bit so as for settings f4 the lowest this lens can go and it's pretty sharp at f4 23 so pretty wide iso uh, 1000 because it is getting a little bit dark and then we got a shutter of 200 which is plenty quick for a sharp image that was the original we're just going to bump the exposure up now I'll show you first what the curves are doing. So if we turn these on, you can see we've got a fade in this channel and then we've got a bit of contrast in these channels. Don't pay too much attention to the color. I'll explain that a bit later on, but practically just some contrast being added in with these channels. Here, um, there's a lot going on with curves, so I can't explain it right now, but we'll come back to that a bit later on and it might make more sense later on in the edit. Up here, we are going to up the black so we can see way more of the image. And then let's up the shadows so we can see more. Down the highlights for that flatness feel and getting lots of detail and color back in the highlights. And then whites can kind of help with the Mac look but we'll keep them there. We want a little bit of a pop, so we won't drop them right down, but we'll do about that. And let's go with there. And then she has a low amount of contrast to her images. So we also did that down here, but we'll just drop the contrast even more up here. Okay, and then we're looking pretty good. So I want vibrance up for a pop. 
but then we'll we'll just drop the saturation for a lot of these down here especially the yellows our yellows are getting too strong so we'll drop the yellows um, yeah blues maybe bring out these purples but we'll change the color of those blues maybe we'll see looking good but as you can see if we turn off the curves and see how washed out our image looks so we really took out a lot of contrast out up here so that's how important it is to understand these tools like the difference between sliders and curves because it's always a combination of working between them so let's get this warmth that we get to this image tons of warmth so we'll come to shadows let's pick a nice yellow you can see there's plenty of yellows in that car tire and stuff it looks very warm very warm All right let's bring this up get that nice warmth and now we're going to come to the highlights and then for the highlights we're going to choose a, a more orange warmer color because i want to bring out all the purples so choosing a red will do that a lot more than say a yellow so bring this up bring it up lots and then if we come to hsl let's just shift the yellows we get much more of that redness to the image as for brightness i think it's important to drop the oranges a little bit so we'll just drop the luminance so luminance is the brightness of colors so we'll just bring that down we'll get a little bit of a pop going with the yellow luminance reds maybe down a bit in the luminance too okay as for saturation um let's bring these greens down And reads down as well bringing these tones down sort of helps our tones and the split toning come through a bit more I'm up here I don't have too many purples and stuff like that but we'll go with um, we'll do a filter up in the sky a bit later let's pull back a bit on those oranges I mean those yellows and then move those oranges there something we forgot to do is enable profile corrections so it's pretty important to get rid of that vignetting there um, while we're here sharpening uh, just a moderate amount masking up a little bit okay we're about good so we're just going to do some filters in the sky and stuff to bring out all the colors just to make them pop so we'll just go exposure just to make the sky brighter and we'll go warmth to just add more warmth purples to really help those purple tones stand out uh, and then let's up the saturation and then let's make this middle area stand out way more so we'll just go with some saturation possibly a touch of exposure uh, maybe um, some contrast can help colors and punch so we'll just do a bit of that and then maybe some whites for a bit of punch there too uh, as for grain we'll just do a bit of grain Lightroom's doing something weird at the moment where if you add lots of grain it only really shows up on your exported image don't know why okay we're about good so let's revisit the curves so they were pretty important so this one was um, adding in that fade a uh, bit of contrast here with the reds so just adding in a bit of contrast here with the reds green pretty much exactly the same as the red but what i will do is just drop the green ever so slightly that slight drop of the green sort of had, helps bring out those purples and stuff like that and then we've got some blues and the brights there actually let's bring those greens back up I didn't like how white uh, purple it was making that area 
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. If you guys want to learn everything there is to know about the curves, uh, we go very deep into it in the course. So if this is confusing to you, um, you really have to understand how the sliders work in combination with the curves. So you can see what it looks like with just that. And then again, I think I showed you earlier, really flat image without those curves. And that's how we get that fade and that contrast. And then just for skin tone, let's do a brush. And I just want to add in some more redness into the skin tone. So we're going to go choose a purple. Possibly some contrast just to make subject pop a touch. Maybe some whites to make a bit of a pop. So we'll just roll with that. And then again, I think that orange illuminance was quite important. So bring that down. Again, helps with that flattening of the image. And yeah, I think the entire sky could do with some more saturation. Don't know. But that's pretty close, guys. Um, right, reset. And what I also think the image needs is a bit more uh, redness to the oranges or to the yellows. I think that looks a lot better. We're looking a little green and yellow. I think that sort of makes our colors look a bit more warmer and nicer. Maybe not the oranges because that affects the ground a lot. But I think the yellow sort of affects this, the grass and stuff a bit more. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. A contrast could come up a touch. I don't know. Maybe. Let's try it. Alright. We'll just leave it there. Just leave it there. Here's our before and after again. Before. After. And here's the before. Let me bump up the exposure a bit so you can see how much we've changed this image. Alright. So. Way better so again guys i've linked up her presets down in the description you want lots of presets for lots of different lighting scenarios if you want to learn how to use the presets join the course so what i have experienced you guys want tons of presets but what works better than presets is dngs and a dng is a raw image with the settings and the settings are already done so the edit is just perfect all right this is what works way better than presets and it's actually how i learned when I first started my camera broke I um, got my hands on some DNGs through these YouTube tutorials and that's what really let me get really good at editing was not playing around with presets but just getting these images and when you have the preset and the raw image and the settings already where they need to be that's what lets you learn really really quickly right so that's why my course I put such an emphasis on getting the raw image because that's how you're really gonna learn and it's just a foolproof way Way you get the exact results you want so I know a lot of you are just you just really want presets presets are good but what's better is DNGs with uh, getting the raw image getting a tutorial to go along with it and then getting the exact settings to the finished edit all right that's what will really improve your editing they're just way better than presets they kind of are presets because once you work your way through the course you're gonna have countless high quality awesome images all have the settings applied and I actually use this big list of DNGs as my really good preset. So I actually just copy and paste the settings from all these raw images. Yeah, I use them as my really good presets. So I realized this is just the best way to edit, the best way to learn editing, and the best way to get really good results. So that's what I've put together within this course. And I'll teach you everything you need to know about Lightroom tools, curves, and then you'll get exact same results like these really talented photographers like Lola here. If you wanted the raw image for this tutorial as well that's in the course as well with a bunch of other youtube tutorials as well because i know how important those uh, raw images are for your learning and getting the results you want and then just as a little bonus they're awesome to try other presets on from other creators because you 
a lot of us don't have really cool awesome uh, high quality raw images all right guys so thanks for watching comment down below people you want to see on this channel really helps me because i struggle to find people sometimes so just comment them down below and there's a free training on the curves and color down in the description where i teach you everything you need to know about color and curves foundations the bare minimum you need to know and then there's also links down below to Lolo's presets course yeah that's about it guys and i'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching